In this video, I'm going to show you the process of multiplication that I have taught my kids. This is a way that I actually learned growing up, not in school, but it's one method that I learned and I just fell in love with it because it was so much easier than the traditional way that um, everyone else was being taught pretty much. And I'm going to first start by showing you maybe the drawbacks of the current method. Current method of multiplication, as probably most people are, have done, you have 6 times 5. The answer would be 30. So you put the 0 in the 1's place and you put the little 3 up here. Then you multiply 3 times 6, you get 18. Then you add the 3, so you end up with 21. Now when you start down here, you have to put your 0 there, so you can start over here. 7 times 5 is 35, so you put your 5 here, and luckily we have the same number, but usually you would do something like that. 7 times 3 is 21, you multiply and then you add the 3 here, so you have 24. You add it all together, get your answer. Now, if this answer were wrong, it'd be kind of hard to figure out where in here you've gone wrong because you had to multiply, multiply, then add, multiply, multiply, add, and so you've changed operations several times and this doesn't resemble any of these products here. The method that I use puts all those operations in a little bit better order. Instead of doing multiplication then addition, multiplication then addition, multiplication then addition, you finally get your answer. You do all of your multiplication first, then you do all of your addition at the end. In addition to that, you have all the products in between so you can check your answers. Let me show you what I mean. In this method, 6 times 5, obviously still 30, but instead of putting one digit down here and the other one up here, you're going to go ahead and write the whole number here, 30. 6 times 3 is 18, but we're really doing 6 times 3 tens, so the answer is 18 tens. So we're going to put 18 in the tens place, and we're going to go ahead and put a placeholder here, not a zero, but a kind of a placeholder. The easiest way to think of that is when you do 6 times 3, the answer is simply 18. You count the number of digits following the numbers we're multiplying. In this case, 5 is the only number that follows these two numbers that we're multiplying. So we know the answer is 18, and there's one placeholder. Then you come down to this next step. 7 times 5 is 35. There's one placeholder because it's really 70 times 5. So the answer would be 35. 7 times 5 is 35. One placeholder. 7 times 3 is 21, but then you count how many numbers are following it. There are two numbers following it, so you're going to have two placeholders this time. And then you have the 21 down here. Again, the answer is exactly the same as it was before. But this time, if you made a mistake, you could go back through and look quickly to see where your problem was. 6 times 5 is 30, 18, 35, and 21. Additionally, you have this pattern here. There are no placeholders, there's one placeholder. Then there's one and two. If there were more digits here, you'd have another pattern. You have two and then three, then three and then four. There's a definite pattern you see there. If we move on to even larger numbers than this, let's say a three-digit number, 324 times 88. You're going to really see the pattern here. 4 times 8 is 32. Then you have 8 times 2, which is 16, and we count. There's one number after it, so we're going to put one placeholder there and just simply write 16 in the spaces to the left of that. 8 times 3 is 24. See, there's two placeholders, so we're just going to put two placeholders and 24. Then we come down here. 8 times 4 is 32. One placeholder. So you see our pattern begins again. 8 times 2 is 16. You have two placeholders. 8 times 3, 24. And you have three placeholders this time. 8 times 3, 24. And you have three placeholders this time. This time when you add everything together. There you go. Again, checking your answer. You see, first of all, you have the pattern. There's no placeholder, 1 and then 2. 1 and then 2 and then 3, and if it kept going, it would be 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. There would be that kind of a visual pattern. But you have your products here, 32, 16, 24, 
32, 16, 24. So you can see exactly that if you've made a mistake, it's not here in these partial products at all. So again, the great benefit of doing this is you're doing all your multiplication first, then doing one round of addition instead of the old way, which would be multiply, you put the number up here, multiply and add, you put your number up here, multiply and add, and there's lots of mixing up like that. And then you also, in the old way, you just don't have these partial products here where you can really pinpoint where the problem is.